Hey guys, welcome to part two of Celica Rust Repairs and Preparation for Sale. So in our last video we did touch on a few of these rust repairs. We exposed a couple of parts that we haven't taken care of yet. Got to get back to those. Unfortunately, I also found a bit more work. Come and check it out. And of course, in actual fact, I found even more work yet again. That's not sitting how it should. But back to what I really wanted to show you guys. Somebody's had a crack before at this inner wheel arch. That looks pretty nasty. Bit of piss poor repair, quite frankly. So we're gonna chop it out, see what we're dealing with along here, and make it look a little bit better than that. So what we'll do is we'll cut this out of skin section off here and along here, and then see what we're dealing with on the inside. be much steel there at all. I mean better put a bit of heat on it and see what we're dealing with. As we have a bit of a look at that, it's had a corner replaced. Not the best job. It's a little bit rough on the joints there, but this is terrible. Look at that profile change. Once again, we find ourselves with some more work. replicate this one now as well. Also it looks like it was done in two pieces. So not too fussed about chopping that one out. Now get a closer look at the replacement piece. We need to chop that shit out too. I'm gonna chop it across here. I'm going to build it all the way down to the bottom this time. I'm not sure if that's how it's meant to go, but um, this is the inner piece here. It's one piece, and I'm going to make it go all the way down because I don't believe it's meant to be cut up here. If it is, anyone else can cut it up higher in the future. So we'll try and get it as close to original as we can. Seems to have been welded on the inside here. Uh, I'll just rip this out of skin off and cut the rest off, I think. There we go. Okay, 
Okay, so with all that crap removed, I think the next step is we're going to create this bottom piece first, create a bit of a solid surface for that, then we'll do the inner and we'll finish off with the outer. Cleaning this up a little bit more, you can see it's actually quite shitty. It's quite a few more holes, a lot higher up. So my option is to either make a panel and weld it in a higher position, or take the whole bloody thing out and do a panel from scratch. And I think that's what we're going to choose. We'll expose some of these spot welds as best we can. See where they are. So that's disposed a few more. We've got one here, 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 and here. So these spot welds are exposed quite nicely now. So as we start to make this new piece, we need to mock it out to shape. Don't really know how far that's going to go on the bottom yet. But it'll probably go somewhere like that and we can trim it. And we'll look at the circle roughly there. Lining up this way, we've got the middle of our pressings, which actually seem to be stopping along this level. We've got our pressings there, 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 there and there. So we're going more or less along like that, going across like that, so that means we've got our lines like that, now that's meant to be flat, so we'll flatten that out. 
So all of these need to be pressed. This needs to be folded. All along there needs to be folded. Along there needs to be folded. And then somewhere along here we need to do a trim. I think we'll start with our pressings and then take it from there. Very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, keep going. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Hang on. Okay, keep going. That's enough to start with. Let's keep going. So, if we look from behind, you can see I've got the round pieces. I actually need to flatten this out. So I'm going to use a bit of old rail iron. Start doing that. And if you have a look from behind now, that's starting to flatten out quite nicely. So we'll do that with a lot. shall we? Uh, before I fold these edges, I'm just going to give it a bit of a trim. I need to get it reasonably close, I'm not worried about getting it exact, but I then need to fold these over and use the stretcher shrinkers as well for this part especially, so I don't want excess material if I can avoid it. Holding these edges using the bead roller. There we go. Yep, keep going. Here you go. Yep, here you go. Keep it steady. That's, that's all good. Yep, keep going. If you look from behind, we've got a nice little edge started. The reason that I've done it this way is that as I then fold this over, I've already got a little bit of solid shape there so it doesn't buckle.
There we go, starting to take some shape. We better put a curve in those top edge now. So, well in actual fact, a bit of a shrink here and a bit of a stretch there. And I think we better do a stretch right here. And side by side, we're looking pretty close now, so we'll cut and trim this edge and start trial fitting it and do some fine tuning as we go along. So we've put a new texture line across everything on where we want to trim it. trim back this lower panel now. We'll make this hole and we're actually ready to install it now. to finish up. <laughs> Alright, so we now have our replacement panel completely ready to install. Happy days.
actually call that part done. Alright, so moving on, we can now make up this inner piece of the wheel arch. I've still got the lower part of the outer quarter sitting there. I haven't welded it together, it's going to be replaced, you can see how crappy it is as we move on and we've still got some work on the rear section of that lower quarter as well. But we will start off with this, it's a reasonably simple curve, let's get it done. So here we have a rough drawing mock-up. My plan is to actually make a cut along here, because once I start making this curve, I need to actually have an angle that comes approximately down this way and I'm not sure what that angle is going to be yet as I continue to make that rolled edge. So it's important that I don't attempt to just cut flat across even though this is the face because once I actually make that curvature it's going to end up at a funny angle if I do. What I do want however is a roughly parallel line because it will essentially more or less take this kind of shape for the time being. So I'm going to trim all this excess off, make this cut, and then I can start looking at this curve here. So again we'll start to try to make a bit of a, a soft curve around here. starting to shrink which is why it's buckling so we may need to chuck this in the shrinker as well it will also assist with the curve as well so we'll try to fit this up to the quarter now but there's probably going to be a line that kind of goes along like that that we're going to have to make so we're going to do a fairly sharper edge coming along here I'm expecting and now, as I hold this behind and up against it, I'm getting a feel for the true nature of where the curve's meant to go. And we're probably looking at something closer to that. So this will sit a bit further out like that and be chopped off here. And it will get chopped on the bottom as well. But uh, it's a fairly sharp corner here. So we need to make sure that we get a fair amount of that curve to be quite crisp. I may even put it in the bead roller. So we'll now use that as our guide to fold it over. I actually also want to look at making a cut those lines and get rid of all this excess steel as well because that'll help with the shrinkage that's going to be necessary as I wrap it round. Not too bad, but we need to flatten this end down here. Okay, so this is more or less taking its shape. What we're 
going to need to do is make a trim line across the bottom and then we'll deal with trimming the top half. So with the bottom roughly lined up, we want it to sit at around about that height, maybe even a little bit lower, but we're going to do a chop around here. See that fits quite nicely, ready to weld in. Let's get him done. tackle the outside skin. Happy days. in place we'll weld him in. That will do nicely. Time to take care of the front half. All right, so we'll fold this over now, and then we'll shrink it and get some of our curve. With that roughly mocked up in place, we've got to look at uh, creating a bit of a folded edge underneath. And we need to do a bit of stretching on this part where my finger is. We're going to heat it up with a mat gas. It'll probably split, but that's okay, because we're only getting a mild trim out of it anyhow. So 
after a bunch of trimming with the grinder and shaping with the English wheel and stretcher shrinker, that's pretty much ready to weld in place. Once we've finished welding it, we're going to trim the bottom edge and we'll trim the inner edge here and that will pretty much call it done. Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap up this part 2 video. Um, I decided to do something a little bit different which is to actually go into a lot more detail with this kind of repair. Uh, it sort of gives you an idea of just what is involved in doing some of these rust repairs. Um, I probably spent a good week and a half uh, working on this, doing some filming between real life Realistically, you're easily looking at three or four days in a panel shop, so you can get an appreciation for why this can cost a few thousand dollars for what is essentially just a small section of rust repairs. Um, so certainly when you're looking for a project to purchase, the cheap rusty project will always cost more in the long run, unless of course you can do it yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this being a little bit more in depth. Join us for part three. We're gonna sort out the rest of this car and have it all done and dusted. Cheers guys. Motherfucker. Fuck's sake. Look at all that extra fucking rust. For fuck's sake. Okay, I'm going to make it. Fucker. What are you doing in here, cat? You're not even mine. There's a text, ah. Fuck's sake. Turd. Oh, oh fucking gonna set me on fucking fire. Ugh.